And welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I want to talk about an object that is rotating around a central mass. And in this case, I'm going to refer to the Moon and to the Earth, where the Earth is in central mass and the Moon, of course, is rotating. And the Moon is, in essence, simply a satellite. And as you can see, it's following a circular path. And here we have a circular path. And the circular path is due to the fact that this object is moving with a particular velocity and is always experiencing a force that is at right angles to the direction that it's moving. So if I show you the velocity vector, here is the velocity. You can see it's always moving at a tangent to the circle, but it's always experiencing a force. And that, of course, is the centripetal force. And the centripetal force is a force that causes it to change direction. In other words, the force is always applied inwards to the circle and is at right angles to the velocity at any given moment. And of course, in this case, the centripetal force is provided by gravity. And so what we have here is a vector that shows you the gravity pulling in on towards the Earth. And of course, you see two arrows because, as you should know from the law of gravitation, is that gravity is actually a mutual force. That is, it's a force of attraction between two objects. And in this case, the Moon and the Earth. And so therefore, the Moon is exerting a force on the Earth and the Earth is exerting a force on the Moon. As a result of this force, the optic is moving in a circular path because the centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force. Now, if I somehow turn off gravity, and of course we can't do that because gravity inherently is a property in one sense of the mass, then of course what will happen to the object? Well, let's see what happens. Well, you can see it just goes off at the tangent. In fact, Newton's first law takes place. So here is back our situation again. And if I play that, if I get that going, you can see that we have here again our rotational motion, where the force of gravity is actually the centripetal force. Now, some of you may be wondering why there is a little bit of a wobble in here. Well, that's because of the fact that the Earth is not completely fixed due to the fact that it is experiencing a force due to the Moon, which is causing it to slightly rotate as well. Because the Moon is quite large, it does have a small wobble effect on the Earth. Now, this is exaggerated in this anim animation. If I were to change this animation to represent what happens with, a, say, an artificial satellite like so, then clearly the mass of the satellite is significantly smaller than the Earth, and you wouldn't notice that wobble. But the reality is, of course, is that the Earth is experiencing a gravitational force due to the satellite. It's just too small for us to see. So that hopefully gets you to understand in terms of what's going on. But what about the mathematics? Let's have a look at the mathematics of this situation and show how we can determine the orbital velocity of any given satellite at a certain distance away from our central body. So here is our example again of our Earth and the Moon. And of course, it is going around in a circle. And that's simply because that the angle between the vector that represents the velocity is at right angles to the actual force that's exerted. And of course, it's the gravitational force that actually is the centripetal force. So let's have a look at that mathematically. So the first thing to understand is that the force due to gravity is equal to the force due to the centripetal force. And that's how we write it. F subscript G equals F subscript C. You should know that the gravitational force is determined by a number of factors. It's determined by both masses and the distance between them squared. And Newton's law of gravitation states that the gravitational force is equal to G m1 m2 over r squared and of course our r in this case is this radius right here and it's always measured from the center of masses our mass one and mass two of course is our earth and our moon and of course that g is the gravitational constant but what is centripetal force well centripetal force of course is equal to mv squared over r. Again, r is, of course, the same radius that is between our two masses. Then the v is the velocity that is over here. 
And if you rearrange this, you can see that end up that this mass over here is actually the moon. And so what happens is this is cancelled out over here, leaving you the only mass in the whole equation as the central body, in this case, the Earth. And so if you rearrange that, you get V squared is equal to G M over R. You'll notice that one of the R's cancel out. And as a result, you'll find that V equals the square root of G M over R. Well, first thing you need to understand that this V here represents the orbital velocity. That is the velocity at which this satellite is moving, in this case the Moon, is moving in orbit. Secondly, you'll see that within the other side of the equation that we have two values that are constant, capital G and capital M. In other words, the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the central body contributes to this orbital velocity. But if I were to change the radius of my satellite, yes, the orbital velocity will change, but the fact is that the mass of my moon has no bearing on it. You'll notice that there's no mass here. So if I suddenly were to remove the moon and replace it with a one gram pebble at this radius, then it will have exactly the same orbital velocity as if I have the moon here, because the mass of the moon is independent. It is not involved in this equation. And thirdly, you need to understand, of course, that this is, of course, the radius between the two objects. And what I want you particularly to notice is that if the radius increases, then the velocity decreases. That is, if it moves further away, then the velocity here is less. Now, that is a little bit different to the centripetal force. If you were to remind yourself again of centripetal force equal to mv squared over r, I'll just write it over here, you know that if I increase the radius, generally this thing you're spinning around your head, if you're doing that as a particular crack, gets faster. But we rely there on the fact that this centripetal force may remain constant. This section here says, hey, no, the centripetal force actually does change because gravity gets weaker as we move out. And so the, hence, in this case, an increased radius means a decrease in velocity of any satellite revolving around a central body. Now, this is true, of course, if you then apply this to the Sun. So, for example, if you want to know the orbital velocity of the Earth, then all you need to know is the mass of the Sun and how far the Earth is away from the Sun, and you get Earth's orbital velocity. It all stems out that the fact that the gravitational force is equal to the centripetal force. One little addition. If you move a satellite further out, like so, from a central body, what also changes? Well, you should understand that the gravitational potential energy is equal to negative g m1 m2 over r. And as you move further away, you are actually increasing the gravitational potential energy. And if you are increasing the gravitational potential energy of any satellite, then as a result, due to the law of conservation of energy, its kinetic energy must decrease. And of course, the kinetic energy is determined by the velocity of the object, and so this is consistent with the orbital velocity. If your velocity is a certain value and you move it further away, you decrease its kinetic energy. Decreasing its kinetic energy means it must be increasing in some other form of energy. That is, it's increasing in gravitational potential energy. So you can see it's quite consistent with our understanding of the law of conservation of energy. I hope that makes sense to you, and thanks for listening. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.